Am I the asshole for causing my ex-husband to not see his sick father before he passes? Throwaway account. I, 33 female, was with my ex-husband, 39 M, for 8 years. He was in the military and about a year into our marriage, he received orders to be relocated overseas. I was nervous but I have no family so there really was no reason for me to stay. Two days before we were due to leave, I found emails between him and his ex and he had been cheating on me. I no longer had a job or house because I had given them both up to move and all my worldly possessions were on a boat. My husband begged me to not leave him so I agreed and moved with him. About two years later, I was eight weeks pregnant when I found out my husband was cheating again and got the woman pregnant. I told him I wanted a divorce and again begged me to at least stay while he finished his work contract. He didn't want to miss our baby being born. He assured me I would still have a ticket home funded by the military when we left. I stayed. I got a job and moved into a very small studio apartment. I ended up losing the baby a few weeks after, which I assume was due to the stress. At this point, I was already locked in a lease for a year and decided to stay until his contract was up. A month before he was due to leave, our divorce finalized. My ex-husband had racked up a lot of debt on useless stuff, and that debt was equally split between us. He was also supposed to begin paying alimony for a period of 18 months. It was at this time I found out I would not have a plane ticket home. My ex-husband has never paid a dime of the alimony. For a little over a year and a half, I have struggled to get my credit back on track after the divorce, and to pay down the debt he left me with so it doesn't go to collections. I sleep on a bed mat on the floor, barely have any money left over each month after bills to eat with, and I pray every day that my old car doesn't give out because the smallest rivet in my finances will ruin me. I am lonely and tired of being overseas in a country where I can't speak the language. I want to move back to the States but can't afford a plane ticket, let alone deposit and rent for a new place. I make the best of it but I often wonder what I did wrong in the past to receive this karma. Present day my ex reached out to me a few days ago asking me to go to a notary and have a paper signed. His lawyer sent it over and it is a financial document asking me to forgive the nearly $9,000 in alimony that he owes me. The reason he is asking me to do this is because he says he now has a warrant for his arrest and has lost his passport due to the balance he owes. He says he is only asking me because his father lives overseas and is sick and he needs to go see him. If I don't sign the paper, he won't get his passport back until he pays the bill. I could really use the money but I also don't want to be spiteful because of how much he hurt me. So Reddit, am I the asshole if I don't sign the paper and possibly cause my ex to never see his sick father again before he dies? He's going to leave country and never come back. You will be trapped. Don't sign anything. Not the asshole. Is there any way to verify the truth of what he's saying? Even if it is true, he fucked around and found out. Hope you can stay safe and get home soon. Your life has been ruined because you repeatedly did what this man asked you to do. I would think you would know by now that the best thing for you ro do is the opposite of what your ex-husband asks you to do. You would be victimized again if you give in to him. KT. Not the asshole. Do not sign that paper. Look, it's immaterial why you got divorced really. Though he is a total asshole that fucked your life over with his own bad choices, he had a court-ordered agreement and he didn't meet it. That is not your problem and it is not your fault. If he couldn't afford it, he could have gone back to court. He just chose to ignore it. So in the end, it is not your fault he can't see his sick father, it is his fault. There is no reason for you to forgive $9,000 in debt after he has financially screwed you not once but twice. He fucked around, he found out. Maybe he'll pay you now and you can get the fuck out of there and get on with your life. Look at God handing you divine retribution on a platter. Accept this gift and burn him to the ground. Your bleeding heart has only gotten you in a sad depressive and poor state. You keep letting this man walk all over you. Have you no will or self-respect? Lady, grow a backbone and go after the money he owes. If you let him get away with all he has done, you deserve every bad thing to happen to you. Am I the asshole for accidentally getting my friend high? Hi Reddit. I, 20 female, had my friend, 21 female. Let's call her Alice, over at my place the other day. We had just come home from a bar for a lil, nightcap since everything had closed by that point. When we got to my apartment I quickly went to the bathroom and told Alice to make herself at home. Suddenly, maybe 10 minutes later, she started acting really weird. 
Like, she was slurring her words in an excessive way and seemed to be completely spaced out. I was incredibly confused because she had barely drank when we were out, and now she was out of it. My first thought was that she could have been drugged at the bar we just were at. Whilst trying to figure out what the fuck I'm supposed to do she asked me what flavor my vape was, which confused me because I do not vape, nor do I smoke. I asked her what she meant, and she pointed at a vape on my bookshelf. That's when everything clicked. For my 20th birthday a friend, 20 male, had bought me a THC vape. My gift would be tickets to watch the new Spider-Man movie High. I am not a stoner, but I maybe once or twice a year smoke with friends just for fun. Anyway, I hadn't smoked it since then, so it was just lying on the top of my bookshelf. I am short, so I never see it hence me suppressing its existence. Alice, however, is very tall. She must have been looking around whilst I was in the bathroom, seen the vape, which looks very unassuming, like any vape, and taken some puffs. Mind you. I do not know what the fuck type of vape this is because I remember taking max two puffs and I had a complete out-of-body experience, and I don't even know how many puffs she took she is an avid vapor. I asked her if she had smoked that vape, and she said yes. Now, Alice is extremely anti-drugs. Her father was a heroin addict, so she never did anything except drink alcohol. I always had a total understanding and full respect to her disposition to drugs so I never, ever did drugs in front of her. I have only ever smoked weed and did the occasional molly festivals, as you do lol. She completely, understandably, freaked out and started crying. I tried calming her as much as I could, I tried giving her food and water or anything to sober her up, but she screamed at me that I had drugged her. She said she couldn't believe I had done this to her etc. I had to call her boyfriend and explain the situation, and he picked her up. I feel fucking awful. My stomach drops even thinking about it. If I had remembered the vape of course I would have stashed it away more safely. But, I hadn't planned on her coming over until we went to my place and by the point we were home I was tipsy, and the thought didn't even cross my mind, just as it hadn't since I had put it on the shelf. As soon as she left I sent a huge apology text to her, but she left me to read. I get it. She has since blocked me everywhere and shunned me to all our mutual friends, who are all torn on the issue. I have barely slept since, I can't eat, I feel so bad. And hash x200b. Am I the asshole? The, not the asshole. She accidentally drugged herself. Plus, it's just cannabis. Alcohol is definitely a harder drug. Not the asshole. The idea that someone is anti-drug but will hit any vape at eye level is kind of hilarious to me. It feels like a bit or something. Not the asshole. She took your vape pen and used it without asking, that's on her. And if she vapes, I assume nicotine products, regularly she should have noticed the taste was off after the first pull. She should have stopped and considered why. Also idk your relationship with this friend but I feel like that's gross. Unless I directly offer to share something that has been in, on, near my mouth then hands off. Like tf? I have no problem sharing things with people like, hey take do you want to try my drink? But I'm not making that offer to everyone and unless I offer don't put your germs on my stuff. Not the asshole she doesn't seem very anti-drug as she's going around hitting other people's vapes. Not the asshole. The paradox of being anti-drugs and yet drink alcohol. Am I the asshole for refusing to drive to my wife's monthly family get-together? My wife, 33F, and I, 35M, have been married for three years. Her family is very tight-knit and every month they have a family get-together at my wife's parents' house. It is always on Sundays because my wife's siblings have kids and they all have activities on Saturdays, so Sunday is the only free day everyone has. They live a three-hour drive from us. We always make a day trip because obviously we have to work on Monday. Needless to say, it's a lot of driving in one day. The get-together is usually just a nice meal and some games, nothing too fancy or crazy. I like her family and enjoy hanging out with them, but there have been times when I don't feel like going and there's no hard feelings about not attending. The problem is, that if I don't attend, my wife doesn't attend. She is a very anxious driver, especially on freeways and highways where aggressive drivers and semi-trucks tend to be more common. She's never been in an accident or anything like that, she just doesn't feel comfortable driving long distances on freeways with speeding cars, it freaks her out. So if I don't go, she won't drive herself there. There also isn't anyone else from her family that lives nearby could come pick her up without adding at least two hours to their drive. 
Last month we didn't attend because I had just gotten back from a work trip and wanted to use that weekend to relax at home. My wife and in-laws understood. This month's get-together is this coming Sunday. My wife is adamant that we attend this one because we missed the last one. I told her I will go, but she is going to have to drive at least one leg of the trip, I don't want to be driving for six hours like every other time. This started a fight because she said I know how much she hates driving on freeways and that's too far of a drive for her to keep from freaking out. I told her that if she wants to keep driving six hours in a day to see her family every month, then she's going to need to start driving at least half of it because I'm tired of doing all that driving by myself. I told her that I will be with her in the car and will be a good co-pilot to keep her calm and focused. Unlike when I drive and she buries her face in her phone for two-thirds of the drive. I told her we can take it slow and easy and it will be good practice for her to become more comfortable with that type of driving. She is not agreeing to this and is insisting that I drive like every other time because of her anxiety about it. I am refusing to budge and told her that this is something for her family so she needs to start putting in at least some effort to make it happen. She thinks I am being a jerk about it and not taking her feelings into consideration and being dismissive of her anxiety. We have not come to an agreement on this yet, but I really don't want to give in. Driving six hours in a day can be exhausting and I'm tired of being the only one to do it. Especially when it's every month. D not the asshole and this sounds like a reasonable compromise. Her anxiety is her issue to deal with. Therapy if needed. She's choosing not to deal with it or even attempt to try to overcome it. Giving her experience driving on the highway with you with her could be a good way for her to build more confidence and comfort in herself. Six hours is a lot of driving for one person in a day. Not the asshole your wife needs to learn how to drive. She is not a child. Not the asshole but has your wife ever sought therapy for her anxiety disorder that is clearly having a negative effect on her life? Not the asshole. You are actually doing your wife a favor by making her deal with this phobia. Stick to your guns. Not the asshole. Regardless of this specific set of long trips, she needs to get over this anxiety. What if you're injured? What if you have to leave town? What about other long road trips? If you're in the US, and I assume you are given that you'll drive 6 hours in one day, she needs to be able to drive on the freeway. Am I the asshole for using the words, weaponized incompetence, to describe my wife's behavior? You're too long did not read. At the bottom. Background. I moved in with my wife back in May. Prior to that, we were long distance for years. When we combined households, I brought my two cats. There was some friction at first, because she's very much unfamiliar with animals in her entire childhood she never had so much as a gerbil. But she did warm up to them over time. She still isn't entirely comfortable though, so as a compromise the house is divided into cat and no cat areas they're allowed free reign of the basement, they aren't allowed into the bedroom, kitchen or bathroom, and they're allowed out in the main floor, but only when I'm home to supervise them. So far, this compromise has worked well for us. The incident occurred on my day off. I was still in bed when my wife, who was getting ready for work, she leaves very early, woke me up. One of the cats had escaped into the main room, and she needed me to come get him to put him back downstairs. I've tried to show her how to wrangle cats before. How to pick them up so she's supporting their weight. How to shoo them out of a room. How to use a spray bottle as a deterrent to keep them off furniture, etc. However, she's been reluctant to use any of what I've taught her. So, she did none of those things, and asked me to help instead. When I asked her why she didn't simply pick him up and put him in the other room, she said she literally couldn't do it. That the cat is too heavy. Reddit, this is a 12.8 pound neutered indoor house cat who has the sunny disposition of a brainless orange tabby. This is not a Maine Coon, a hefty boy or a feral tomcat. He will happily let people pick him up and move him, he likes the attention. I expressed disbelief at this. A child or a little old lady can pick up and move a friendly house cat. It's not difficult, and it is something she needs to be able to do in case this kind of thing happens when I'm away at work. And here is where I may have erred. I used the words, weaponized incompetence. I love my wife dearly, but this isn't an isolated incident with her, and I am not the only person in her life she's done this with. Having seen a bit of the family dynamic in action, I think she learned from a young age that she can get out of certain tasks by pleading helplessness. Now she's furious with me, less so for the cat thing and more so for the use of the words, weaponized incompetence, she's also mad at the implication that I don't actually believe her when she says she physically cannot lift a cat. 
she has no disability or inability that would preclude her from lifting that amount of weight. Too long did not read. Version. Wife said she couldn't pick up a small cat after being shown how to repeatedly. I said this was an example of weaponized incompetence, and now she's pissed off. Am I the asshole? ETA. I'm seeing a lot of ESH. Not in response to my question but in defense of my cats. I guess I understand. I didn't provide a lot of detail. Please see my comment below. I wouldn't consider her discomfort physically handling a live animal an act of, weaponized incompetence. In all honesty if she's not comfortable picking the cat up then she absolutely should not be picking the cat up, for her own safety and the cat's safety. Esh. Esh. It seems your wife doesn't like cats and doesn't want them and probably doesn't want to touch your cat, if 12 pounds is really too heavy for her to lift, take her to the doctor. Not sure why she won't just say that, or why you haven't accepted it. But that really seems like where you're at. It's your cat just yours alone. She's willing to allow you to have a cat in the house. Be thankful for that and don't expect anything else and you'll both probably be happier moving forward. I think you two need to learn to talk. Not the asshole. She didn't have to lie and say she couldn't lift him. If she's uncomfortable, she could just say as much. I feel terribly for your cats. They don't deserve this.